What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week 9 here in the SFL, and we have a ton of subscriber-related action taking place today. Loving to see you guys still commenting down below, wanting to get your creative players added to the SFL. We're up to like 28 now, I want to say, and I am just having a ton of fun with this series, and I hope that you guys are too. Now, we have three new subscribers joining the league today, two of which are going to be on your very own Toronto Thunderbirds and we also take on the Canton Condors today the two and five Canton Condors and they have also three subscribers on their team as well but let's just kick things off here by looking at our team because we got two new additions and we are going to look very very different specifically in the running back room so no more Kyron Williams coach said you know what you get injured too much you're out of here buddy so we had to go bring in the new running back number one Tubby McDouble. That is right, Tubby McDouble, the five foot nine, two hundred and sixty pound running back out of Oregon State. Shout out at Wayne Kelly in the comments. Gonna love calling his name. Game in and game out. Number two, gotta give him that number two for that McDub. And Tubby here is I'm already laughing, but if Tubby's running downfield. With that 99 break tackle, you better get out of his way to go along with 93 strength. Kareem Hunt's still going to be running back number one, but Tubby here is going to be the feature back. And I'll tell you what, he is going to be hungry on that field. We're not going to be feeding him McDoubles, but we are definitely going to be looking to feed him the rock. Next, we got a brand new defensive tackle here to play along Michael Pierce on the defensive line and that is six foot four 322 pound jay monstro out of iowa the hawkeye shout out to at monstro 87 in the comments he is going to be our new d tackle number two and don't let that size fool you he is very fast with that 92 speed also has really good finesse moves as well at 88 and still pretty strong to boot so i feel like he'll be a good compliment michael pierce is kind of like the big power guy. We got Jay Monstro opposite side him, the finesse guy. So hopefully that will help to bolster our defensive line and increase those sacks and those TFLs. And last but not least, joining the San Juan Tigers in the NFC South. Tigers now got four subscriber players on their team. And if you guys watched last episode, they just beat us 26 to 20. But we have a new cornerback in town, King Love here. Thought it would be cool to pair him alongside Dior Love, another subscriber on this channel. So two Love quarterbacks. Our quarter, our quarterback is Jordan Love. They got two Love cornerbacks. But King Love is 6'4", 190. Didn't give me a college, so I just picked South Carolina. I think he was defaulted on that. But 6'4", really good size for a cornerback. He is a very fast with the 95 speed. And also playing pretty good lockdown man coverage at 86. Zone coverage is decent. Nothing too crazy. But with the 92 catching, I feel like King here might be king of the interception. It might be intercepting a lot of errant passes thrown by the opposing quarterbacks. So welcome to the league, all three new subscribers. And if you guys would like to join the league, if you don't know what's going on, go back and watch episode one. But I will leave a pinned comment down below with all the credentials I would need to add you to the SFL. Today we take on the Canton Condors in the AFC North. Formerly the Bengals, I want to say. Maybe the Steelers. I don't know. But they are in the AFC North. They're 2-5, and five, so not great. But let's take a look at their squad. They got Jared Goff as their QB. Also Jameis Winston behind him as well. They got three subscribers on this team. We'll get to them in a moment. Aaron Jones is halfback number one to go along with Jalen Warren. So two really small guys. Alex Arma is the fullback. And then wide receivers, they got Michael Pittman Jr., Drake London, and then subscriber player here, Braden Keys, who just had a very good game a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, going over 100 yards. And Braden here, he is, that's right, it's all coming back to me now. He is a speed demon, 98 speed, can also run pretty good deep routes as well. Imagine he's probably their slot guy. But with that 98 speed, if we're going to press up and play man coverage, we better have some freaking safety help today. Tight ends, nothing special. Mike Gasicki, Daniel Bellinger, Kylan Granson also back there as well. Offensive line, left side doesn't look too good with Trevor Penning, Dylan Parham. Yeah, the left side, not very good. Center, Matt Paradis. I mean, whatever. Average, older. Nate Davis is the right guard. So their offensive line, yeah. 
Their offensive line is not good at all. Defensive line, though, whole another story. They got Max Crosby and Vaughn Miller. Awesome. Awesome. I can't wait for the sacks. I can't wait for the sacks to be on full display here today. Like a freaking Ron Jeremy video in HD. We got Harrison Phillips. Pretty good D tackle in his own right. Uh, Leo Chanel is the left linebacker. Devin Lloyd, really good. Mike, very uh, serviceable. And Logan Wilson, yeah, their pass rush is astounding. Corners, they got Xavier Howard, the X-Man, Byron Jones, Troy Hill. So, okay. But now we get a look at our subscriber safety duo in the secondary. We got Eli Sokowitz here at Free Safety. Shout out at Annie Sox in the comments. Check out his YouTube channel as well if you're into anime. He has a very, very good, uh, ever-growing YouTube channel. But Sokowitz here is a pretty well-rounded safety. Not the fastest in the bunch, but really good zone coverage. He can also tackle pretty well and lay the big hit. So he may be a problem in the secondary. And then the strong safety, we got Mike Collins, Matt, uh, modeled after the famous Nick Collins on the Green Bay Packers, per his request. And Mike is a 5'11", 206-pound rookie out of Rutgers. And kind of, well, I was going to say kind of the same model as Sakowitz, but uh, not as good on the hit power and the tackling. But a little bit faster. Zone coverage may be a little good as well, but or a little better as well, I should say. But either way, they got two very good subscribers in the secondary. Blake Groupie is the kicker. Okay. And then Tommy Townsend is the punter. So what will happen today? We played a team last week in the San Juan Tigers that we should have beat. They had a bad record and we were unable to get the job done. Will the addition of our new subscribers, though, help us out? Tubby McDouble at the halfback and then Jay Mongstro at defensive tackle. Looking for them to make a big impact in this one here, Sunday night primetime at the Bird's Nest, going down to Hall of Fame City, Canton, which is only about 15 minutes from where I live. So if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content and you're loving this series so far, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. At 1,000 subscribers, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. So please help me get there. And without further ado, guys, let's go down to Hall of Fame Town, Canton, Ohio and get ready for the game. The old man is definitely snoring as it is raining and pouring. Get a look at those pyrotechnics here in Canton. Fired up to play a team with three subscribers and the SFL is growing. More subscribers are joining more teams. And of course, if you don't know how this goes, at the end of this episode, make sure you stick around because I will go through everybody's performance here in week 10, all my subscribers that is. So that should be a fun, fun time indeed. But we are going to get the ball first, so our offense kind of struggled a little bit. You know, only putting up 20 points is kind of unlike us, so looking to get a big rebound, but that rain could be a big factor today. Hopefully, Tubby McDouble can hang on to that ball. Jordan Love playing good, though. 13 touchdowns. Did throw a couple picks last week, so that touchdown-interception ratio not as good as it once was. But that's all right. Still having a very good game in terms of yardage. I like these purple uniforms that the Condors got going on. What I don't like is Von Miller and Max Crosby on the edges. Darren Waller back, though, so we'll see if he could be a good impact. He's been hurt for a few games, and he's got definitely got the fresh legs there uh, as he's able to pick up about 16 on the opening carry. Nice to have him back because without him, we were down just really one good, big receiving option. And I think that he's going to definitely play a good impact here today. Now, we're going to give it to McDouble here for his first inaugural carry of the SFL. Show me something, Tubby. Me picking up three. Also, it's just going to be so fun to say that. Show me something, Tubby. Tubby McDouble, that is the most goaded name that I think I've probably ever seen. Let's go McDouble on the draw here from the 40 with Max Crosby. And Von Miller there on the outside, not going to be looking to flirt with those edges too much today. Uh, their pass rush and their defensive line, definitely, I would say, probably one of the uh, the best facets of this team here. And here on third and five, definitely going to be a passing situation. Yes, I kind of like Olave on a curl. And you know what? With that corner kind of playing off a little bit, that might actually be... My first read, it's not, and there's oh, Zay Jones. What a catch. What a catch by Zay Jones. I actually meant to pass lead him down on that one, and I accidentally kind of threw it to the left. 
but Zay Jones has been so clutch for us. Olave is getting pressed too, but we got the safety Sakowitz right there. So unless he blitzes, which he kind of did, but I shouldn't have thrown that. Yeah, shouldn't have thrown that. I got hung up on the press there. Olave, he just doesn't play that good for us. He, I mean, he really hasn't done too much of anything. He's got a couple really big gains and a couple uh, massive touchdowns. But as far as like targets and receptions, not really there. And you know what? I'm Speaking of Olave, I'm going to actually put him on a drag. The, uh, this pass rush is going to be here, but I think that's Waller. Wasn't the most, the most best pass. Wasn't the most accurate pass from Love, but it was enough to get the job done and take this ball down to the 20. Got to try to get McDouble going. Coach is saying run out of the shotgun, which I do like. Go ahead and ID up this guy as the mic here. And the problem is just those edges, though, man. Got to always watch Vaughn Miller. Got to put a block on him. Oh, look at the nice juke from McDouble. He's not just a power back. He's got some fancy footwork as well, picking up about nine and a half on that one. And let's just go right back into the eye form. Run it up the gut here. See if McDouble can break a couple tackles. Big number two did just enough. Five rushes for 15 yards, only averaging three yards per carry. Start this one out, but did get a big first down. Ball is on the 10 here. Let's see if we can roll out, maybe hit Olave in the corner. Just see. Oh, God, no, it's Max Crosby. Yeah, yeah, I think that's going to be a reoccurring theme in this one. Max Crosby and Vaughn Miller. It's going to be really tough to stop those guys. And our offensive line is pretty good. Don't get me wrong. They're going to have their hands full in this one. So let's uh, go a little play fake here. Oh, Zay Jones is so open. Zay! There we go, getting it down to the two. What a reliable target Zay Jones has been in this one. And this has got to be got to be McDouble's uh, first touchdown of the season, right? I would prefer to go something inside zone as, a po as opposed to uh, goal line. Not sure if this is the best formation that I like, but let's see if McDouble can get in. I think he will. And he is for his inaugural touchdown of this SFL campaign. Let him know about it here in Can Tubby. Welcome to the SFL. Go ahead and flex on those haters. And remember, guys, if you would like to see one of your players featured here in the SFL, all you got to do is comment down below. Comment your player name, your height, your weight, what college you went to, what uh, what position you want to play, obviously, what team you want to be on. If you're not sure what the teams are, you could go back and check out episode one. They're all in there. And then just, uh, you know, a little bit about yourself appearance wise stuff like that so anyways on defense here and we have jay monstro our new defensive tackle let's see if he can maybe get back there to golf he's trying wide open receiver but that was nearly picked there by jordan poyer wow he was looking for michael Pittman. not sure if that was due to the rain but that was not a good pass by golf at all and we'll try zone coverage here for a little bit miles garrett also back as well He's been hurt for a few weeks. Definitely missed his presence out there on the field. Comeback route, and there's a nice catch there from Drake London for 22. Getting this ball all the way almost to midfield. See how Goff and the boys handle pressure. We are going to press up, and of course it's going to be a run to Aaron Jones. He's got space finding cutback lanes. Aaron Jones, very elusive. Of course, uh, Packers moved on from him, which at first I was kind of like, eh. I don't know about that because Aaron Jones is just, I mean, he's he's a Packer through and through. Now he's a Viking. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But the addition of Josh Jacobs, I think that could actually be deadly. So as a Packers fan, I am very happy. Very happy indeed. And there is a catch and a completion there to tight end Mike Gesicki for eight. Second and two, let's show Blitz here. And we're going to use their control on subscriber Jay Monstro. He's got the finesse moves but aaron jones has the finesse moves too only able to pick up one and we got a chance to hold the condors here to a field goal and let's use their control on antoine winfield see if he gives the ball to jones which he is winfield coming down to make the tackle it was the right move by me but just too much ground to cover condors pick up a big third down we've historically on this thunderbirds team Played really good defense, you know, um, shutting teams down, never had a shutout, 
I don't believe, but shutting teams down, holding them to seven and stuff like that. Oh, nice defense there from uh, not sure who that was, Pat Pete. I thought Aaron Jones had that one, but he did, in fact, drop it. Guessing pass, shading inside here. See if we can get some pressure. That would be nice. I'm usering on Antoine Winfield. Not necessarily the best choice. And there is subscriber Braden Keys, the two-year man out of LSU. Remember, he's the one with that 98 speed. I said he'd probably be the kind of their slot guy. He did definitely come out of the slot in that one. And we got to always, always, again, make sure we got safety help on him. It's a user on Peterson here. See if he can play some good coverage. It's Jones. It's going to be a flag, and they might get me for illegal touching, honestly. Maybe holding, but probably illegal touching, yeah. Yep, I was kind of jumbled up in the mess there. And did they actually accept that? Can't tell. I mean, it's first. It's going to be first down regardless. But I thought that they were on the three, and now they're on the five. So I don't know. Regardless, though, let's have Bobby Wagner come straight up the middle here. Probably going to be a run to Jones. It's a great play fake. And that is actually just a catch and a completion and a touchdown from backup tight end Daniel Bellinger. So nice response for the Condors. Potential shootout in the making. Passing yards, rushing yards, very close, although still owned by the T-Birds. But we do not own the score, which at the end of the day, that is the only stat that matters. And that puppy is tied right now, 7-7. Seven, seven. So I'll go back to the I form, bring in McDouble here. Um, don't really necessarily like this defense that they're showing me, but we're going to try it anyways. And yeah, it was just too clogged up there in the middle. Thought that might be the case. Third and five upcoming now. What do you do here? I kind of, I was about to say screen. Coach says screen. Five yards with Kareem Hunt. We should be able to get this, although... Got to watch Vaughn Miller there. Superstar X-Factor on the edge. See if Kareem Hunt can get some good blocking. Oh, nobody wanted to block Sakowitz there. And he was ultimately able to get us. And you know what? Call me a gambling man. I don't normally do this. But I really feel good about draw play on this one. And I'm going to do it. I realize we're on the 34. I would not normally do this. It could be a terrible decision. But I just have a good feeling about it. So please, Tubby, he's going to get it just barely. Fuck yeah. Not going to be doing that too much more in this game. But call it a gut instinct, a intuition. Call it whatever you want. Just make sure you call it a freaking first down. Because that is exactly what it was. Zay Jones is uncovered here. I think it might be a quick step drop and sling which it typically works that way. Oh, my God. He's so open. I didn't even throw that as soon as I wanted to. Good thing, because if I would have thrown it as soon as I wanted to, it might have been picked. But Zay Jones continuing to be our prime target number one picks up a huge gash play. It's a big one here, boys. Kareem Hunt blocking. I like that. Could have maybe Olave or Waller, but we're not going to have a lot of time. We're just going to give it to Waller. I know. I know. Wasn't, I mean, you got to throw it past the sticks, but if nothing else, I mean, I don't think we would have picked that one up anyways. So at least it's going to make the field goal a bit easier for Justin Tucker, and he does not need too much help because he is the clutchest kicker in the game. Points on the board is points on the board. I'll take it. We do go up 10-7 against the Canton Condors. Goff had a really good drive last drive. Let's see if he can repeat that or... Hopefully, our defense can just kind of figure it out. I'll tell you what, though. I'm going to go away from zone. Zone did not work too well for me. So let's try a little bit of man here for a little bit. Nice RPO, but threw it into traffic. That one could have been dangerous as Antoine Winfield was right there lurking. We're going to go press man again. Man coverage. Um, I'm going to test it out for a little bit. Again, wasn't really happy with the zone. There's Aaron Jones. Oh, nice move. Shook LaMarcus Joyner out of his jockstrap. I definitely see a jockstrap there laying unattended on the field, and that belongs to one LaMarcus Joyner. That was a great move by Jones. Got to make sure when you're playing a guy like Jones, man, I might need to just kind of ease off that turbo button because uh, Jones can do that. He could definitely do that. He's running good in this one, picking up about 8-9 on that one, 8 they say, to bring this thing almost to midfield. A little safety blitz, though, might be a good idea. Let's get some pressure in the backfield with Monstro. Okay, it's not Monstro. Oh, we had two. Count him two chances to get Aaron Jones in the backfield, but he's a good back. 
you know, I, I think that was a good pickup by the Vikings. I think that he's going to, if he could stay healthy, that's, that's the big thing with Jones. He has had to face some injury problems in his career. So far, he's a little uh, puffing and puffing back there, looking like he's going to blow our house down. But if he can stay healthy, oh, man, nice. Uh, that was a bad pass lead there by, uh, by who's their quarterback again? Jared Goff. That was a hospital ball as uh, it's going to send Michael Pittman to the sideline. We're going man again. I don't care. I think it's the best call here. Um, hopefully, we can get somebody back there. Oh, did. Okay, I was about to say DJ Reed with blanket coverage. I thought the receiver held on to that for a second. It would have been Chase Claypool again. But DJ Reed has played so good for us. Didn't get the pick on that one, but it was solid blanket coverage. And that's a fake from Tommy Townsend. What are they doing? That's got to be picked. Come on, Tommy. I know you played with Patrick Mahomes, but you ain't Patrick Mahomes. Definitely caught me off guard, though. I was not even, I was kind of just taking a breather, kind of zoning out, thinking about the next thing I wanted to say. And Marcus Peters, who's also starting to rack up the picks, adds another one to his resume. Well done. Let's actually try the outside stretch play here with uh, McDouble. We got to ID up Max Crosby, though, because you know he's going to be like a lion hunting his freaking prey out there. But, I mean, I'll take it. McDouble not able to push the pile forward, but a gain of six. Guess what? You pick that up every single time, every single play, you win the ball game. That's how that works. Six yards per play will win you the ball game. So nice, nice run in there by McDouble. Come out single back here with a bunch to our right and just see who can get open. It's just going to be a check down to Logan Thomas underneath. And it was actually a missed tackle by Devin Lloyd. Nice pickup by tight end number two. He's 69 and with somebody out there. That's Sakowitz. I don't know what he's doing out there. And you know what? I was talking to Tubby before the game. He said he is hungry and he is on a strict diet of first downs. And that is all, all he wants to be eating this game. So running it up the gut, he will. Forward progress should get it. And it does. McDouble only averaging 2.6 yards per carry, but that's okay because, again, the only stat that matters is that 10 up there on the scoreboard. I like the slot outs and see what uh, McDouble has. Okay, never mind. It's going to be Kareem Hunt. I was going to say, see what McDouble has in the way of his route running prowess. And Kareem Hunt, though, he can catch it all. Nice defense there. Nice defense there by Mike Collins. Kareem Hunt giving him an earful. Coach is saying screen. I'm going to call it but I'm going to flip it because it has not been working over there on Vaughn Miller's side. So let's see if on Max Crosby's side, we might have a bit more success. I think it's kind of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't type of thing. But look at McDouble shoving the defender away. That is what he does. Should have been stopped for only a gain of one or so. Ends up picking up eight. Third and three. This could be McDouble season. There's a lot of traffic in there. Oh, man. Just needed to beat one man. And how about this? How about this? How about the the cojones from Coach Damon Sanders? He's saying go for it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This might be McDouble on the out route. We're going to give it to him. Look at Tubby. Oh, and look at him shoving the defender aside. Still going. Okay, I love it. That break tackle, that stiff arm, he is a power back through and through. And I like the call. If, I mean, if the coach would have said kick the field goal, I would have kicked the field goal. But uh, I, I do like the call. I like the cojones from the coach. So we got a minute 10 here. Clock is not a factor at all. Matter of fact, I would like to actually take a little bit of it off if possible. Throwing into traffic. How about MVS? Heck of a catch there for Valda Scaling. Third and two here. I like draw play, even though it hasn't really been working. We're going to call it. Yeah, I mean, this, this could be it. Draw plays are usually pretty successful, but this Condor's defensive line has been on at this game. But, oh, trying to push the pile forward there as well from A.J. Khan. Zay Jones goes down, though. That's not a good one. That's not a good one. Don't want to lose him at all. Come out uh, stick from the shotgun. Maybe Waller or Valda Scantling will be the reads, or maybe Love will just scramble. He can do that. Should have thrown it to R1 there. Definitely should have thrown it to R1. 
Let's go ahead and call it time. Oh, is Mark uh, Zay Jones not going to come back? That is unfortunate. Actually, kind of like MVS on a slant here, too. Or a drag, no slant. I would say Olave. He's a little far out there for my liking, but it's Mike Oxmoor. Subscriber touchdown for my man Rams fan. Subscriber on this channel, Mike Oxmoor. We got Mike Ox. We got Mike Oxmoor. We got Tubby McDouble. I mean, come on, man. You gotta love this Toronto T-Birds team. I know I sure do. And what a clutch reception for the TD. Gonna miss a kick from Justin Tucker, though. Wow. This wind is a blowing. Uh, but 16 7 should be the score going into the locker room, which it will. 16 7. So good defensive showing from the T Birds. Offense, okay. Missed some opportunities. So definitely some cleanup work to do here. Gonna look at the SFL scores around the league. See if any of our subscriber players are playing Monarchs and River Hogs. And nope. No subscribers there, but the Monarchs do pull off a good win over the Memphis Riverhawks. Dreadnoughts and Bisons. Lots of subscribers. Two on the Bisons, one on the Dreadnought. Alexander Klobleck. You see him with five receptions, 72 yards. And I also saw quarterback Buchanan there doing good as well. Taking a look at the SFL. like to always showcase this because it's nice to see the teams around the league. And again, if you guys want to join, let's freaking get it going. Comment down below and I will add you next episode. Rain continues to pour here and the wind continues to howl. Aaron Jones played pretty good though. So we're going to probably need to clue in on that. Jared Goff's been a little, I'd say inaccurate on some of his passes. Let's go ahead and press up here. Then a little blitz and user up on Antoine Winfield, who's going to be guarding Jones. Nice defense there from Pat, from uh, Marcus Peters, who does have that pick earlier from uh, not Jared Goff. No, from Tommy Townsend, of all people here. Second and 10. We're going to guest pass and we're going to shade inside. Would love to see some pressure from Monstro. It's a wheel from Jones. He shakes the tackle too. Marcus Peters can't get him. Aaron Jones, if you watched any Packers games over the last five or so years, you will know he is a big threat in the receiving game. And Bobby Wagner, if he would have just put his hands up there, may have had a chance on the ball. But that was exactly what the Condors needed. Huge, huge gainer there from Jones. It's going to use her on Wagner this time and pretty much just be watching Jones the whole entire time. Yep, Goff was looking that way. And look who it is. New subscriber, Jay Monstro out of Iowa. Getting the big, big sack on Goff. So both of our new subscriber players playing a big, big impact in this one. You love to see it. Instant impact since joining the league. But no, it's Braden Keys. Braden Keys, the subscriber out of LSU. The fast speed demon with the 98 speed. Got it all the way down to the two-yard line. That was a bullet pass. Thread in the needle by Goff. And that one was very unfortunate indeed. And you got to figure, barring something crazy here, Condors will probably punch this thing in. See if they'll go to Jones. They're not going to. Oh, dangerous pass. Dangerous pass. Could have been picked off again by us, by Rodney McLeod. But look who it is, rodeoing in the end zone. It is Braden Keys. Capping this drive off, putting a little bit more pressure on the T-Birds. Good news though, we are up on the scoreboard. So as long as we keep playing good offense, keep Jordan Love clean. This one should be in our grasp still. And look at Marquez Valdez Scantling filling in for the injured Zay Jones. Not as good of a player as Zay Jones, but he is speedy. And offers a lot there uh, on those deep routes, those crossers, and things like that. Now, I did switch the focus at halftime to run outside. So maybe if we get a good pull from our left guard, McDouble might have something here. And unfortunately, tried to juke. Juking is not his strong suit. Eli Sakowitz gets the stop on that one. And what do we do here? That is the question. What do we do here? I think we go Bills Vert. Olave's getting pressed too. So Eli Sakowitz, brother, I need you. Oh, he did too. He did too. Does Olave have it? He does. Yes. 
Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. Olave does not make too many catches on this team, but seems like every catch he does make is a big one. And look at that throw there from Love. You love to see it. Getting it just barely over the arms of Byron Jones for a shot play downfield to Chris Olave. Second and seven will come out in our 13 personnel here. Wish Olave was getting pressed. He is not. Shouldn't have went to Logan Thomas. Should have went to Darren Waller. That one is on me. Big third and seven upcoming. This time Oxmall is getting pressed, but I don't know if that's necessarily. Yeah, I don't really like that one. So we're going to go to Olave, and he actually hangs on for a first. Had to come back for that one, too. But Chris Olave, again, like I mentioned, we don't uh, really call his name too very often. But I feel like every time we do, it's for something extremely positive let's shift this over to the left side with tubby give me some good blockers hitting the hole one man to beat there and we were unfortunately not able to do that tubby again out of eye form he told me he was hungry i mean he had a little bit of an appetite there picking up four i mean slants could work i suppose i'm not typically a fan of slants i was in uh madden 23 i can tell you that much but not so much in 24 it's an all-out blitz. This could be good, which it actually might be. MBS hangs on. Good play wreck there. All the linebackers blitzed up. They sent everything but the dang kitchen sink at me. And as soon as I saw that, I trusted MBS. Chiefs fans may not uh, agree to do that, but I did trust him, and he ended up coming through. Fine and pay dirt. Should be able to hit this with J Tuck. Give ourselves a little bit of breathing room now, making it a nine-point game. Braden Keys, though, was the focus of the last drive, so guess we got to put a body on number 86. Got to always see where he is. He's on the left side right now. I'm just going to go straight blitz up the middle with Wagner, see if we can get in the backfield and stop Jones. It would have been a stop. Is that Keys again? No, it's not. It's Drake London that time. But still, though, Jared Goff, man, he must have... Uh, Grab some smelling salts or maybe some other type of white substance coming out of the locker room. Huh? Because he is playing like a man freaking possessed. Would love to see some more sacks on Jared Goff. This one should be a run to Jones. No, it's not. It's an RPO. Chase Claypool. feel like we've called his name more times than you should call Chase Claypool's game in a SFL game. Huh? So Goff coming out single back here. We're going to use her up on Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett needs to make a bigger impact. Come on. Thank you. There was a bunch of people in there. Zach Cunningham, Yaya Diaby, Michael Pierce. Thought Goff might actually slip away from that one. And I tell you what, I would have been a sad, sad boy. Now we can safely just guess pass and shade uh, over top here. Drop back Leonard Floyd in coverage. Goff has options, though. Downfield, and he's going to go down. It was Miles Garrett and our new subscriber player, Jay Monstro. With his, that should be not two, but 1.5 for him. So he's playing a huge impact too. That's going to force the Condors to punt. And I just literally just said, would love to see some more pressure on golf. Pressure was had on that one. Tommy Townsend going to come in to punt this away out of bounds. Let's see if we can blow the top off this thing. I'm going to actually send Olave on the streak, and he might be my first read, which I like it. Olave having his best game of the season. Three catches for whatever he has, 70-something yards maybe, I want to say, 80-something yards. And I'll tell you what, <clears throat> this is our game to lose here. Passing yards are great. Rushing yards, we do have a slight edge over the Condors as well. But the score... We have the most favorable edge, and we get to start this uh, fourth quarter with the ball here. Look at who just put a cap on this one, say night-night. And we're going to try Tubby on the outside. But got to ID up on Max Crosby there. Give me some good blockers. Run through him, man. Couldn't run through the X-Men, Xavier Howard. That will bring up second and six. All right, man, I came out run, but Olave's getting pressed again. And this could just be... Olave's career game. So I think that's an interception. No, it's a touchdown, Chris. Welcome to the SFL, Chris Olave. I don't know what that was. That was like some dang cheerleader moves. But I'm just so happy for Olave because if you guys watch the gameplay and everything, 
he he's just a ghost out there. Like he's silent. He's silent. He never really gets the ball. And this is the first time that he's actually making a huge, huge impact in this one. This one could be RPO to Valdez Scantling. Give me a block. All right, man. We are in the driver's seat. 17-point game. Let's lock in, play good defense, and get out of Canton with a big W. Crowd getting a bit silent here in Canton. Not really hearing too much from them. We've we've definitely uh, definitely brought our A games today. That much is for sure. Oh, it's Braden Keys though, still making an impact. Wow. Braden, I hope that you are watching this because your creative player is absolutely balling out. And, and I'm happy for that. Like, obviously, yes, we're playing you. And of course, I want to get the win. I'm going to try to get the win in every game. But if a subscriber player balls out against me, like, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's good content. That's what I know you guys want to see. Tried to hit Braden again, but that, or actually Mike Gasicki that time. But that one was a little bit off the mark. Miles Garrett, enter Miles Garrett. Please get in the backfield there. Is that Keys again? Oh my God, dude. Send this man to the Pro Bowl right now. Send him to the Pro Bowl right now. Eight minutes away from a big, big victory here. Let's see if we can just stay 10 toes down. It, it's Keys, man. It's in that 80. Oh my God, that 89 speed or 98 speed, whatever he has. We're just, I mean, never going to be able to catch him. He also broke two tackles there too. So Braden is balling. He's fired up. And I mean, this game is not over. It's about to be a 10 point game. So he definitely, the window was, was not cracked. There was a slight draft coming in. Braden Keys just opened that window slightly. And now instead of a draft, we got a slight breeze coming in. I can actually feel the breeze coming in. I might have to go shut the window because he just left it cracked. And I'm not going to return that with Patrick Peterson. No freaking way. Let's march downfield, put some points on the board, and put this one to bed. And I would love nothing more than to make this the Tubby McDouble show for the rest of the game. There's big lanes. Come on. Truck somebody. He does. Tubby at 80 yards. And I'll tell you what, we're definitely in chew clock mode. So he may, if he can continue running good, he may hit that uh, century mark. Now, we are going to give the ball to Kareem here only because, I I mean, Kareem Hunt still, like, he's a good back. If I was playing for the lead, I would definitely streak Olave, but we're not going to do that. Give me a good pull from a guard. Kareem only able to pick up one. That one was semi-unfortunate. Going to go pass here. May not be the best decision, but I feel good about it, and we are going to target... The wrong team. As a pick from subscriber Mike Collins. Okay. So Mike, congratulations. I don't like you right now. I like you because you are subscribed to this channel. But I don't like you right now. Because I there's no longer a slight breeze blowing here. That window is cracked. It's storming out there. The wind is howling. And the window of opportunity is wide, wide open because of my dumbass mistake. So the Condors just put up 14 points in like 20 seconds. That is a uh, highly unfortunate. Could be Valdez Scantling RPO. I actually like it. Scantling does have some speed. Want to keep that clock going too. Jordan Love over 300. Did throw that pick though. So that is definitely uh, not good at Looking all. Do I like draw play three. with Tubby? I kind of do. I mean, we've only... Uh, called this about four times and it doesn't seem to be working at all but we're gonna go to it nice crease there tubby running with force now averaging 4.4 carries and getting closer to that ever illustrious 100 yard mark we're playing the canton condors yes that is the team we're playing but we're also playing a secondary foe which is my man father time father time is not our friend right now this could be oxmall on the RPO as well. Nope. Just going to stay outside run. McDouble didn't have the speed. That one is unfortunate. This biggest third down of the game. Got to pick this up. We're going to roll out with Jordan Love. And we actually just have. It's going to slide right here. Not even going to go out of bounds. I usually look to hit my tight end. So Darren Waller in this case on that TE attack. But Jordan Love. He can scramble. He can definitely do that. And uh, did not want to go out of bounds, obviously, and stop the clock. That's a huge no-no at this point in the game. So that was definitely a positive play. McDouble out of pistol. Defenders are there to meet us, so may have to look to go 
back to our aerial attacks. Actually seems like good time for play action because they're probably expecting the run. And we have somebody open out there. It's MBS who's come in for Zay Jones and just played great. Played great. Love to see it. We're going to let this tick down to the two-minute warning. Valdez Scantling, six receptions for over 80 yards. Come on, McDouble. Lead me to the promised land. I'll take it. Going to force these Condors to use their timeouts so you know I am just going to be uh, run run game for the duration here. We're going to come out I form power. And if we get a first down here, I mean, it's essentially ball game. So McDouble, show me that you can do it. You will. And get down to the three-yard line as well. Tell you what, man. I am going to go. May not be the right call. I usually go coach suggestions. But I feel good about why stick to Olave. But want to take off as much of this time as possible. Could be Chris's second touchdown of the afternoon. And it's not. What do you do here? I mean, they say field goal. I don't see how. I don't see how we don't just go for this. Let's see what the defense looks like. I mean, I feel like Kareem Hunt's got this. I feel like Kareem Hunt's got this. There's a there's a little hole there. All we need is one yard. Come on, Kareem, get it. Thank you. That was the most stressful 15 seconds of my entire life. And I'm 34 years old. I mean, literally, my entire... Okay, no, that's a lie. It, it, it was it was stressful. But that will effectively end it. Don't think the Condors should have this many points on the board because we let them score 14 in about 20 seconds. But a hard-fought game and got to see a lot of our subscribers in the SFL on full display today. 40-28 is your score. I was not talking, so I'm not going to keep this in the video, but Jay Monstro actually got a safety to end the game. And so they had the free kick, and then the Condors free kicked it out of bounds. But lots of stuff to digest here. So Jordan Love played great. Did have that one interception, which kind of sucked. But 338 and three touchdowns. Jared Goff also 269 and three touchdowns. Tubby McDouble, three yards shy of 100 26 carries, so he was a workhorse, but he did have a big touchdown and four broken tackles. Aaron Jones played okay. Kareem Hunt didn't see the field that much, but had that big, big touchdown to pretty much seal it for us. And how about subscriber Braden Keys out of LSU? Six catches, 124 yards, and two big touchdowns. Good to see Miles Garrett back in form, 1.5 sacks, and shout out to Jay Monstro. With a big sack, two TFLs, and wait for it, wait for it. There's that safety. Mwah, chef's kiss. You love to see that. Our defense played good. Also had a pick as well from uh, Marcus Peters. And then subscriber Mike Collins got a pick as well. Check on where is my man Sakowitz. 14 tackles. Holy freaking cow. He was all over the place and won big TFL as well. So overall, good, fun game. We do get the W. And now time to see how the rest of our subscribers did here in week number 10. Dreadnoughts and the Bisons here of Salt Lake City dominated by the Bisons. And the Bisons, we just added a couple players. Mason Buchanan, rookie out of Michigan State. He had three touchdowns, zero interceptions, and 222 passing yards and a 140.7 quarterback rating. That is awesome. And then Nico Petey, his subscriber mate in the backfield, 19 carries for 92 yards and a big touchdown as well. So Bo And Buchanan also had six for 32. So that is awesome. And then we cannot forget about the receiving game of the Dreadnoughts. Alexander Kluvlek, no touchdowns, but five receptions for 72 yards. Led the Dreadnoughts in receiving at 14.4 per reception. Honolulu Dragons. That's our only punter here in the SFL. And Brock Purdy is their quarterback. He continues to play great. And we'll check on the punting of my man Jack Mavros. Two punts for 116 yards. That is awesome. Awesome. Along of 68 and average 58 net yards on his punts. Great kick in there by the rookie out of Washington. Sentinels and Black Knights. Couple subscribers on the Black Knights and a subscriber quarterback 
Rocky DiBernardo out of Florida. He had two touchdowns, but the yardage wasn't really there. But the yardage was there for the uh, rookie out of Georgia, Jaden Hayes, on the Paris Black Knights. So good football play there. Uh, Kenneth Walker, also not a subscriber on this channel. That'd be cool if he was. But uh, Devontae Adams cooked. But we really got to check on the brother, Caleb Hayes, here of Jaden Hayes. Two catches for 14 yards, no touchdowns. But I always say it, most important stat, his team got the victory. Ooh, San Juan Tigers now, after beating us, they're feeling themselves. They're on a little bit of a win streak here. So uh, Tua playing pretty good there, but that's not what we are worried about. We are worried about the receiving of Nick Stoyer. Two for 37, pretty good game. And then we also got our tight end, St. James. Okay, so you know what? That's an improvement because they have not getting my they have not been getting my man involved at all. So it's nice to see him have at least one catch for six yards. And we got two cornerbacks to check on here for the Tigers as well. We have Dior Love, who had six tackles and also a pass deflection. So good to see there. And then we should have our new subscriber, King Love. Had an interception and a pass deflection in his first game in the SFL. Welcome to the league, brother. I think you just helped your team get a big, solid victory. Okay, see, Antlers take care of the Louisville Desperados here. And what's up with the yardage from these quarterbacks, man? Justin Herbert with only 101 yards. In what freaking world? But checking on these stats of our subscriber here, C. Ben. Six tackles, no uh, big plays, you know, no no interceptions, no fumbles. But he must have done just enough. The defense had to be the ones to win this game because I'll tell you what, sure as frick wasn't Justin Herbert in the offense. Shamrocks and Nighthawks, couple subscriber QBs, and the Shamrocks keep pulling out. They were the only winless team through like seven weeks. Now they've pulled together, I think, three wins. And Jesse Buzo Jr. had a good clean game only 185 yards but two touchdowns that is good and then Derek Daragosa also had a good game he tore us up when we played the Nighthawks let me tell you what 223 and a touchdown unfortunately his team dropped so congrats to Jesse Buzo on the subscriber quarterback duel with the victory and these Virginia Beach Blues just keep finding ways to win man only one loss on the season and Josh Allen keeps throwing these sub 200 yard games i do not understand it so we will check on the receiving stats of easy fuentes no targets interesting but uh, as my man said in the comments a couple episodes ago victories over receptions any day and his team just keeps finding ways to win they're now seven and one i believe oakland wizards pick up the w against the london mounties and we have a subscriber I mean, look at this, man. Something is going on in this league. Like, in what world does Dak Prescott throw 137 passing yards? Like, that, that's that's crazy. And then we play quarterbacks, and they throw 300-plus. But we got to check on the stats of Michael Briner. He had four tackles and four tackles. So, hey, it's okay. You got the W, so you must have played at least some sort of impact. Of course, the T-Birds and the Condors, you guys just watched that game. And then the Austin Lumberjacks, who are in our division, did take the loss here. Michael Yakin, 193, two touchdowns and a pick. So maybe that pick could have been what uh, ultimately sealed the deal. Not 100% sure. And then we have our subscriber tight end, James Briner, only two catches for eight yards. So not too much of an impact played in that one. Looked like it was... Rondell Moore and Sam Laporta were the and Calvin Ridley were the two two uh, three big options in that one, but that is how everything stacked up in Week Nine. And buckle your freaking seatbelts! I'll tell you what, because we got Week Ten against the Armadillos. Subscribers on that team. Week Eleven against the Lumberjacks. Subscribers on that team, and they're in our division. So it's gonna be. We've had like three straight games against subscribers and we got two more coming up now. So lots of fun and excitement to be had. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.